Dynamax Adventures is one of the best ways to get your hands on shiny legendary Pokemon. In fact, it's the only way to get some legendaries with their alternatively colored pixels. I've never really done them, and I want some shiny legendary Pokemon. That's why I'm going to be locking myself in this cave for the next 100 hours to try and find oh as many shiny Pokemon oh as I God. possibly can. <laughs> this grind took me many months to complete. So before we get started, if you could like the video and subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, here we go. To give you a brief overview of what a Dynamax adventure is, basically, you speak to this woman to get started. You can either choose a specific legendary to hunt, if you have any saved, or you could choose to look for anything. You get to pick one of the many randomly assigned Pokemon as a rental, then fight three large Pokemon, which you can catch and swap out for your own. And then you fight a legendary. Hopefully you chose a good route and assembled a decent team to take on this guy. Some of them can be pretty tough, but we'll talk more about that in a bit. Anyways, once you've defeated and captured the legendary, you get to check if any of the four Pokemon you captured are shiny. If they aren't, you just leave and try again. Simple, right? Since I'm new to Dynamax Adventures, and this is my first time ever really doing them, I didn't have a specific target in mind, so I was just looking for anything at the beginning. And usually it's when you least expect it that something shows up, because on my very first Dynamax Adventure, this happened. And which shiny will we find? Who's gonna be shiny? Is it Escavalier, Bronzong, Pukumuku, or... Oh my goodness! Oh, first try, let's go, it's so easy, it's so easy, you know, I kind of want to take the Escavalier though, okay, so I'm a bit of a liar, because this was my second Dynamax adventure, I just for some reason didn't record the first one, oops, regardless, first or second Dynamax adventure, it's absolutely ridiculous to find a shiny that quickly, let alone a legendary. Not only that, but this first set of Dynamax adventures I did was without the shiny charm. For those of you that may not know, the odds of finding a shiny within Dynamax adventures is a 1 in 300 chance without the shiny charm. These odds obviously seem too good to be true, but you also have to take into consideration that it's a 1 in 300 chance after getting your entire way through the cave, which I would say on average takes about 20 minutes. So doing some quick maths, it takes 20 minutes to do one DA, therefore it would take approximately 6,000 minutes in order to do 300. And what do you know it, that's about 100 hours just to hit the odds for a single shiny legendary. So having hit those odds on literally our second adventure, I'm feeling pretty good. Also, there's something else I just think I need to mention. I also have a shiny Buzzwool. Now, I have no memory of catching this other shiny Ultra Beast. But apparently I did back in October of 2020 when the Crown Tundra DLC first came out. 2020 Thumbus must have been wildin'. Now, the thing is, I know I didn't do more than like 5 DAs back in the day. So, that means I hit this 1 in 300 chance twice. In like, maybe 10 Dynamax adventures. Crazy. Anyways, to recap day 1, I murdered 1 Yuxi, 1 Zerkatri, 1 Articuno, 1 Tapu Fini, wiped to Zygarde, beat one Dialga, one Latias, one Solgaleo, one Rayquaza, lost to Kyogre. Nah, we're gonna win, we're gonna win. I'd win. Nah, I'd win. It's a wipe. <laughs> Yikes. And finished it off with two Ho-Oh raids. One win and one, uh, not win. And if you don't know, Ho-Oh has one of the greatest shinies for a legendary, or honestly for any Pokemon ever. It's fire. So the goal for day two was to get our hands on a shiny Ho-Oh. Also, before the adventuring started on day two, I went and got the shiny charm to increase the odds all the way down to one in 100, which means we should be able to find a shiny legendary on average every 33 hours as opposed to every 100. Woo! Okay, and other than that, day two wasn't very eventful. I took on 11 Ho-Oh raids, and that's it. Except, Day 2 of DAs was on February 26th, and I had this little bit to say during stream. It'd be Legends Mew, Legends Celebi, Legends Jirachi or Deoxys, I'm not sure. Then you obviously have Legends Arceus, Legends Victini, and then afterwards, who cares? Gen 6 through 9 don't deserve Legends games. Now, if you don't know, February 27th is Pokemon Day. 
And on Pokemon Day, we were greeted with the announcement of Pokemon Legends ZA. So, that's a wild jinx. Since Legends ZA was announced, I decided to throw in the towel on Shiny ho -Oh and start the perilous journey that is Zygarde Raids. Now, Zygarde is notorious for being one of the hardest Dynamax adventures to complete. It uses mostly spread moves, which means it hits all four Pokemon on your team at the same time, and when it hits 50% health, it transforms into complete Zygarde, giving it more health and more defense. So, there's two strategies for killing this monster. Find a Pokemon that has Wide Guard to protect your team from spread moves. Wide Guard, Wide Guard, Wide Guard, take the Pelipper, take the Pelipper. Or, try killing Zygarde before it has a chance to transform with four times super effective ice moves. If I was a betting man, I would bet we're gonna win and get the shiny. Yo, huge helping hand. Let's go, one shot him. Now, these are two strategies that took me days to get a hang of, especially because it's basically all luck whether you find a Pokemon with Y Guard or Ice Moves. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. I attempted nine Zygarde raids on day three. Any guesses as to how many I actually won? Two. Yeah, this hunt is no joke. But day three wasn't a wash, because I guess the Shiny Gods felt bad for the pain Zygarde brought me, and rewarded me with this. Hey, look at that, shiny ride on. <laughs> I also wanted to end Pokemon Day on a high note. So instead of wiping to Zygarde again, I chose to end the day with one crack at Ho-Oh. And I'll just let the clip speak for itself. Bisharp, Golurk, Wartortle, and... Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> No way! <laughs> wow! Wow, yo, good thing we ended on a ho -o. <laughs> So, even though the day was an utter failure on the Zygarde front, I somehow still walked away with two shinies. And since I have the shiny charm now, these shinies were a bit less rare, coming in at a 1 in 100 chance. Speaking of that, let me discuss the shiny odds a bit more in detail. When you complete a Dynamax adventure, you have four different Pokemon that can be shiny. Now here's where some people get confused. Just because there's four Pokemon doesn't mean your chances drop all the way down to 1 in 25. Each roll of a shiny is independent of one another. So you have four different 1 in 100 chances as opposed to a 4 in 100 chance. Meaning that once you've completed 25 different raids, assuming you win them all, you've then seen 100 Pokemon. So, you can expect to find one shiny in 25 raids, on average. Or, again, doing some quick maths, about one shiny every 8-ish hours. Just to put that into perspective, in my last Scarlet and Violet video, I caught 55 shinies within 24 hours. Now, obviously this was extremely lucky, but that's about 18 shinies in the same amount of time for one from DAs. Is 18 shinies within 8 hours too much? Well, that's up for debate. Now, if my name was Blue Vector, and I was able to do this, and also had four different switches doing the same DA at the same time, then my odds would be 1 in 25. But luckily for my wallet, I only have one copy of Pokemon Sword and the DLC. Also, I was doing these raids with viewers right here, live on YouTube. So, be sure to subscribe if you want to play Pokemon with me in the future. Anyways, it was time for Day 4. And Day 4 is when I went full throttle against Zygarde. But remember how I said winning a Zygarde raid was basically up to chance based on the route you get? If only there was a way to guarantee you have a good route every single time. If only. Well, there is. Kind of. If you're playing online, which I was, and you're the host and have a consistent route, once you get to the end, if you don't find a shiny Pokemon, you could just close out your game and reset. And the game will have the same route for you saved. There's two problems still though. First, you still need to find a good route. It's just, once you do, then you can keep resetting. Second is Dynamite Ore. What's it called? Dynite Ore. You see, if you keep quitting out of raids early, it's not really early because the raid is over, but whatever, this lady starts to get very mad at you. You can quit a raid three times without penalty, but afterwards, it'll cost you three ore to do another Dynamax adventure, increasing by one ore each raid and capping out at ten. 
So eventually, if you keep doing this, you'll be paying 10 ore for each raid attempt. And this is a problem because if you quit a raid early, you don't get any more ore. So you're limited to the number of times you could redo a route, based on how much ore you have. Anyways, it took me the entirety of day 4 just to find a decent route to keep redoing. And just to reiterate how difficult this raid can be, we were now up to 21 Zygarde raids at the end of day 4. Any guesses as to how many I've actually won? 6. That's a 28% success rate. Uh, not very good. Days 5 through 9 were just more of the same, doing the same route over and over, until I ran out of ore and once again had to go back to the trenches to farm more. I will say though, after doing solely Zygarde raids for multiple days in a row, they do get a bit easier. So I was having more success than before, and eventually had enough ore and a good route again. On day 10, I found out there was actually one other way to ruin your route. Oh! Orangaroo. <laughs> now, the question is, is it worth losing the consistent route for a shiny monkey? Yes, of course it is. We've now found a total of four shinies, and that buzzwool. This also broke a 64 raid dry streak I had going, so that's fun. Unfortunately, not the shiny we wanted, but I refused to give up. I was finding the shiny snake even if it took all 100 hours of this challenge. But the next couple of days were just more What's of the same. What's the point? We are not chicken. So clearly I wasn't going insane from all this. I also just have to say, doing Dynamax Adventures is just such a mind-numbing experience if you don't take a break from it every once in a while. There were plenty of times where I was just on autopilot doing them. Lights on, but nobody's home. But on day 14, the 11th straight day of Zygarde raids, something happened, I kid you not, on my 100th attempt. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> ah! No way! <laughs> It's finally over. Oh, I can't believe it's real. I can't believe it. Oh, let's go. Oh. Technically 101 because of day one. Mm. Now, you may see this counter above my head. Yeah, it's wrong. <laughs> this was our 100th raid and the 72nd one where I actually got to check Zygarde, meaning our win percentage for the Zygarde raids by the end was a 72%. A lot better than the 28% it used to be. Believe it or not, technically an under odd shiny. Although I only phased once the entire time. You sense the presence of many. Oh. Oh. Okay, guys, come on. That's that's sick. That's sick. <laughs> and there you have it. A shiny Zygarde from 100 hours of Dynamax Adventures. See you next time. Wait, we still have like 60 hours left? Okay, well, back after getting back. the Land Snake, back to back. Oh. I decided on day 15 to just do a bunch of random raids again to try and figure out what I wanted to hunt. I did one Xerneas, one Groudon, which I wasn't allowed to catch because I caught it back what? in the day and didn't what? remember. Why did that just happen? What just happened? Why did that just happen? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Why do I have a Groudon? Why do I have a Zekrom? What am I doing? What was I doing back in 2020? Jeez. A Cresselia, Feramosa, Giratina, Rayquaza, Latias, Tapu Lele, and then two more Rayquaza raids, because I decided that that was going to be my next target. Free. Rayquaza is free. And surely, it wouldn't take as long as Zygarde did. Also, I'm just now realizing while editing, we went from hunting the land snake to the sky snake. I didn't even know I liked snakes. Day 16 was the start of the rest of my life hunting Rayquaza. What's nice about no longer doing Zygarde raids though, is that I don't have to keep resetting the path, or worry about ore management for that matter. You just load up a new route every time, and most of the time, you'll win. Obviously, there was the occasional loss though. Why do I die to one extreme speed? Oh my god. <laughs> Since Rayquaza was a much more consistent raid to complete, it really didn't feel like much time was passing by. It was, but it didn't feel like it. But no matter how long it may take, 
at least it wasn't taking years off my life the same way Zygarde did. Something else that was nice about Rayquaza raids was that they were a bit more friendly with the Shinies. On day 18, after 29 raids and 26 wins- Oh! 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 That thing's green! That thing's green! Did someone say... This accordion-legged green man was technically slightly over odds, but at least it didn't take as long as the monkey. But now, back to my cave. Which, I would not be leaving for another couple of days. Day 22 to be exact, after another 47 raids. Oh, no way! <laughs> that is absolutely a friend. At least it's an amazing Pokemon with an amazing shiny. One of my Surf favorites for sure. Surf to me. Surf. Yippee! Yippee. But the next shiny I was going to get was not one of my favorites and showed up after 19 more raids. Oh! <laughs> That's a shiny! Oh! Let's go! Let's go! We're so good at the video game. The first one in a long time that was actually under odds. Oh, it floats. It floats. Why is it floating? And it may not seem like it because I'm finding shinies, but my time was starting to dwindle down. With just 20 hours left on the clock, I was really hoping Shiny Rayquaza was going to show up soon. Trust the process. Yeah, it wasn't looking good. I spent the next week doing Dynamax Adventures, but in the most poetic way possible, on the final DA of the entire 100 hour journey, this is in fact the one. This is the one. I got nothing. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Not only did I go my last 71 Dynamax Adventures dry, but in total, I did 166 Rayquaza raids, plus two from before officially starting the hunt, winning 146 of them, plus two, and only getting three shinies from all of that. But that's just the way it goes sometimes. In total, I ended up with eight shiny Pokemon from 100 hours of Dynamax adventures. Eight is honestly on the unlucky side, because on average, you could probably expect 12 to 13 shinies from 100 hours of DAs. That being said, I did walk away with three shiny legendaries, which is lucky. So if that's the price I have to pay, so be it. In total, I attempted 302 DAs, 15 Ho-Oh, 101 Zygards, 168 Rayquazas, and 18 of other legendaries. Although the results may not have gone exactly as I would have liked, I still had a ton of fun playing Dynamax Adventures seriously for the first time. It was also so great to get to play them with so many subscribers right here, live on YouTube. If for some reason you feel the need to watch me do 100 hours of Dynamax Adventures, you can become a member for 99 cents and have access to every single YouTube stream VOD. Also, shout out to all the channel members. Your names are on screen now. And that's gonna do it from me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and want me to do more Dynamax Adventures, let me know. Like and subscribe. Bye.